Here we go again with another product that I cannot pronounce. Kari... Kuri... Kuri... Uh, well, however you say it, we're having a look at the 4G LTE AC1200 dual band Wafar router. The LT500. And while you're on that new tab, make another tab and check out our Carbonite merch we have for sale. We have added some new desk pad designs and there is new updated 2022 t-shirts, which has been silk screened this time around. Back to the router, it's good to see that claims made on their website actually carry through to the real world. Like this one easy line that states, plug and play. It is exactly what I experienced. Slotting in a SIM card can actually be a bit fiddly though. You might need some assistance with a long and strong fingernail or the use of a SIM ejector tool to click in the SIM card. But once it's in there, it's a couple of seconds of wait for the SIM to register and wha-bam, you have internet. This is also held true when I plugged in our fiber connection into the router. You just need to ensure that you have enabled the WAN mode in the user interface. While we are on the UI, it is simple and easy to use for the average household. All that they will ever require just there a couple of clicks away. I really wish that it had a dark mode because my eyes. Oh my goodness, my eyes. When you first log in, you are greeted with a system status page showing the stats of your connections. If you like graphs going up and down, mm -hmm. how much of your bandwidth is actually being used. And you can see the status of your internet connection, whether it be 4G or fiber. You can also monitor the devices connected to the router and control whether they should have internet or not. A great way to annoy the people in your household. Moving to the general settings, which is the next tab. This is where you can change simple things like your Wi-Fi password and enter your details if your ISP requires, as well as set up your VPN. With the on-device VPN, you can choose to either go L2TP, PPTP, <laughs> OpenVPN and WireGuard. Lastly, you also get the Advanced Settings tab, where the advanced features can be selected for those advanced individuals that need to advance their network in advanced ways. Things like static routing, port forwarding, and setting up some custom DN DNSs. D DNSi? D D DNSs. Let's move to the hardware itself. It's not a bad looking device, nothing like those demonic crown looking devices from other brands, but then again, all routers kind of look the same. So if you're buying a router on what it looks like, yeah, don't. It's like a Bucky in the year 2000. All of them pretty much look alike. There's only a couple of ways to style a Bucky or style a router for that matter. Anyway, you have four antennas, antennae, however you want to pronounce it. Two of them are used for the 4G signal and then the two other for distributing your Wi-Fi in your home. You get four LAN ports at the back, one that can double up as a WAN port, but that also then means you lose a LAN port if you want to use it as a fiber router. You also have a micro SIM slot, a WPS button and a reset button. And next to that, you have the power port. Not a lot of indicator lights on this one. It's literally just one. Just one that blinks red if you have a connection error and one that is solid blue when you have an internet connection. The Wi-Fi range and speed on this device isn't bad. Well, I suppose it's good then. However, I should state that I stay in a very densely Wi-Fi populated complex and that you might experience greater range and stability if you're in a freestanding unit. So having more than one device is absolutely necessary for me. I know this, even when I'm using my day-to-day -day router. That being said, this router can be used and integrated with Kuditech's whole home mesh systems, which I would really love to check out sometime because I'm really curious if two of these routers can be meshed together or do I need to purchase the mesh devices separately? And it actually it seems like the latter is the case. The interior specs of the QD LT500, yes and I'm going to pronounce it differently each time, has a MediaTek chipset at heart controlling the 4G and the Wi-Fi. However, it isn't stated which chipset it is. It also has 128 megs of DDR2 RAM if that actually matters to the normal person on the street. This router supports Wi-Fi 5 and boasts bandwidth speeds up to 1002 200 megabits per second if you believe the AC standard attached to its name. Just gonna put an asterisk there, it's it's up to. While having the router, I didn't experience any troubles with it. No need to reset it due to no internet or any of that sorts. It performed as expected. And I, I shouldn't say this, but routers nowadays 
are routers and it all comes down to what the user wants to accomplish with these routers how easy you want to navigate the ui do you want to set up crazy network rules and many other things i'm no network expert and i don't need my routers to do fancy things because i will probably end up breaking things and my life will end with the uprising of the router race so if you need a router for let's say your camping trips because it does support that 4g or you just need a no fuss plug and play device for your home for the price i would definitely say that it is something that you need to consider i haven't seen a lot of e-tailers but cuddy kudi cutie have just entered the sa market and one of our very trusted resellers on carbonite actually stock these routers so go and check it out i'd just like to say thanks to syntec once again for sending this device through much appreciated, and I'll see you next time. And goodbye now.